All right, Swifter, why don't you get yourself a glass of hot cocoa because we're going to be working with Cocoa Pods once again. We're going to install Google Places libraries using Cocoa Pods. We're going to create a Google Cloud account. We're going to create a new Google Cloud project. We're going to add and secure the API key. And we're going to learn how to use .gitignore to prevent uploading your API key to a public GitHub repository. Let's giddy up. Now, after installing the CocoaPods software on our Mac in the previous video, in this video, we're going to use CocoaPods to install the Swift libraries for Google Places. We're going to set up a Google Cloud account. We're going to create a new project. We're going to get an API key, and we're going to add the API key relatively securely so that it won't be uploaded to GitHub. Now, the documentation that Google has online is pretty good for its Places product, so let's go ahead and find that. So I'm going to search for Google Place Autocomplete iOS Swift. This first page that shows up should take me exactly where I want to go. You can see I'm in documentation for Google Maps platform in the SDK or Software Development Kit for iOS. And on the left, I'm going to click Get Started. Now, if I scroll down here, I can see there's some information on CocoaPods. First, there's the instruction on how to install CocoaPod software. Again, you only need to do that once, so you wouldn't need to repeat this, and we've already done this in the previous video. Then down below, we see a bunch of commands from source to end, which are what we'll include in something called a pod file. That will instruct CocoaPods to install the software libraries in order for us to use Google Places. First, we're going to create a pod file, then we'll copy these commands, paste them inside of the pod file, save the changes to the pod file, and then we'll perform a command called pod init that will copy over all of the Google Places software using these commands. Now, in order to make this happen, we need to be in the terminal program. I happen to have mine open from the previous video, but if not, you can command space and type terminal to bring up the terminal. Now, I've got a bunch of the output from installing CocoaPods previously. Feel free to ignore that if you're starting terminal from scratch. I'll increase the font a bit by pressing shift command plus a few times. Now that I've got the terminal up, I'm going to open up my weather gift folder just at this first level here. So I put my project right on the desktop. That's where I'll find it. You can see this is the folder that has the XC proj file. If I click and hold down on weather gift in the title bar, I can see the desktop is right below it. So this is exactly where I want to be. Then I'll return to the terminal program. Then I need to change my terminals directory to this folder. And the way that I'm going to do that is by typing in the CD command for change directory and then space. Now I could type in the path for the directory for my project, but I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to go back over here to the finder into my weather gift window. I'm going to click on the little blue folder icon up top, hold down the mouse. And as I drag it over, I can drop it just after a CD space right inside the terminal window. And when you let go, look what happens. It writes the path for that directory, for that folder, right into the terminal program. I can press enter and I've just changed directories. If I type in the Unix command ls, that will list the files in this directory. And you can see it says weathergift, which is actually the folder, and weathergift.xcodeproj, which is my project file. So now that I'm inside of this directory, I'm going to type in the command pod space init and then press return. And now look what happens over here inside of the weathergift folder. It creates a file called pod file. Some developers edit the file right in the terminal program. I prefer to drag my pod file right into Xcode and just use the WYSIWYG editor there. So I'll click on this pod file. I'll drag it right on top of the Xcode icon in my dock, let go, and that will open the pod file inside of Xcode. Then I'm going to go back to my browser page where I was on the Get Started page for the Google Maps SDK. I'm going to highlight these commands from source down to end, copy them with a Command C, return to Xcode, I'll highlight all the lines underneath target weather gift do. That line, by the way, says, okay, do the installation inside of my weather gift project. I'll do a command V to paste. Then I'm just going to highlight these two lines below, the source and the target line. Delete those. I'll readjust end, but pod files aren't really fussy about spacing. I am going to backspace over the hashtag just before platform iOS 9. The hashtag acts as a comment inside of the pod file, and I'm going to change 9 to 11. This is the minimum iOS platform that the pod file will support. The instructions didn't tell us to change the platform, so we could probably ignore that. Then I'll do file save here in Xcode, or you could just do a command S to save. Then before we run the next command in the terminal, it's important to quit completely out of Xcode. So I'll command Q. I'll minimize my browser window, take a look at what we currently see in this finder window, then head over to the terminal, and we're going to type in pod space install. Press return, and then what happens is CocoaPods will go ahead and execute any of the commands inside of this pod file. It might take a little bit of time before this installs, but eventually you'll end up at the percentage prompt, which suggests everything has been installed properly. If there were any concerns, you'd see them in amber or in red printed out in the terminal, and I'd say just follow those instructions if you happen to see them. Everything is fine here, though, so now we're done with the terminal. Now 
here is a very important warning. If you have installed CocoaPods, do not open up your project with the Xcode proj file. You want to, from this point forward, after you've installed CocoaPods, open up your project by clicking on the XC workspace file. So again, ignore Xcode proj, use XC workspace. And really to fully drive that point home, I'm gonna right click on XC workspace and select the green light on it. So you can see green means go. This is what I should be double clicking on. You can see inside of this window that we've got more files than we had before. I'll double click XC workspace. My workspace launches. It looks like you don't have files in there, but just click on the expansion triangle in your project navigator and you'll see all of your files. You see some stuff for pods in there as well. We won't need to touch those, but that shows that our Cocoa Pods were installed and we're ready to continue. Now I'll return to my browser in the Google Maps platform documentation for the Places SDK, which is Software Development Kit for iOS. And you want to make sure you click on the section on the left that says Get an API Key. Now an API is the Application Program Interface. Now one way to think of APIs is as programming hooks or guidelines published by firms to tell other programmers how to get a service to perform a task, such as sending or receiving data. So the Google Places API is a set of specifications to be able to get information on all the places that Google has in its Places database. Now an API key is used to identify our application so that Google can keep track to see if we need to be billed. It'll also keep track of usage statistics. Now this is important up top where it says new users. Before you can start using the Google Maps platform APIs and SDKs, you must sign up and create a billing account. So to learn more, we can click on this link. So let's go ahead and click on get started with a Google Maps platform. Now there are some instructions to follow. If the instructions have changed and they're different than what I'm showing here, feel free to go back and follow these step by step. But hopefully you'll find that the procedure is the same as I'm showing you right here. Under quick start, I'm gonna click on this blue get started button. Then on the welcome to Google Maps platform screen, you can click on the blue get started button here. I assume you've already got a Gmail account, so if not create one, but if you do, then use that to log in. Click next, Google Cloud Platform will ask you for a name for your project, so you can give it any name, but it should be descriptive. I'm gonna call mine weather-gift. I've already got an earlier weather gift in here, so you can call it weather gift, whatever you'd like. You've gotta click on the check mark next to the terms of service, and then you can click on create. It'll take a few seconds to set this up, and then you'll get this prompt that says that you've gotta create a billing account. So just click on create billing account. Google will ask you to select a country. You'll have to click on, I've read the terms of service, click on continue. Then fill out all the data on this form. For account type, you can just say individual. Fill out the rest of this information, and again, you're going to need to add some credit card information in here, but Google's not going to bill you unless you go past the $300 credit limit. I've never had a student do that. But you're on your own here. You do want to make sure that you keep track of your API keys and you don't distribute those on GitHub so that other people could use them and use your account credits. Then click on create after you've got all your account information in there. I'm not gonna type my credit card information here on the video. Click on got it when you're welcomed. When you get to the screen to enable Google Maps platform, we wanna click the check mark next to places. Then select the next button. Google will ask you the question, which industry are you in? I select education. Then click this continue button. Google also asks, what do you wanna build? I just select other. Click next, click enable APIs. Then Google's gonna show you your API key. So click on these little buttons over here. That's the copy icon that will copy the API key to your clipboard. Now, if you forget your API key, you can always go back into the console and you can always regenerate your API key too. So if it gets out in the wild, it's not permanent. You can get another one from Google. Just make sure that you put it properly in your app as I'll show you how to do in a bit for the next time that you distribute your app. And by the way, the API keys that you see here that uh, I was using, they've already been regenerated. So those don't work, but you're learning how to get your own. Then you get this dashboard that shows you all sorts of statistics. Not surprisingly, there's nothing in here because we haven't used the API yet, but just click on got it. Now over here on the right hand side, it's good practice for us to secure credentials. So we're going to click on this secure credentials button. Under application restrictions, I'm going to click on iOS app. So that will restrict this API so that it can only be used for an iOS app. And before I'm going to continue, I can go up here and you don't have to do this, but I'm going to give my API key a name. So I'm just going to say, weather-gift, which is the same name as the project. Then I'm going to go down here where it says accepts request from an iOS application with one of these bundle identifiers. I'll click add new item and then head back to Xcode so we can get our bundle identifier. So you want to click on the blue project icon in the upper left hand corner, that weather gift icon. You should see up top under identity, it should say your bundle identifier, which is probably com.yourlastname.weathergift. I'm just going to highlight that whole bundle identifier in there, command C to copy it. 
then return to my browser, paste it inside this field that's asking for the bundle ID, and now when I click on done, this API key can only be used on an app with this bundle identifier. It just provides you with a bit more security, which reduces the chance that somebody will be able to abuse your key. Then go down here and click on save. And now there's one more bit of security we want to do. We want to set up our git ignore file. So any file name that we add to our .gitignore file won't be tracked by Git, and it won't be uploaded to GitHub. So if you have anything sensitive that you don't want out in the wild, like a file that contains your private API key, then you should put the file name that you intend to use in a gitignore file before you create that file. So this will ensure that the file is never going to be tracked by Git, and it'll never be uploaded so that others can see it. Now we're going to create our gitignore file inside of our project folder, so let's do this now. I'm going to command space to get into Spotlight, launch the terminal program again. I'll make it a little bit larger. I'll cd space, then I'll return to the finder, click and drag on the WeatherGIF name in the little folder in the title bar of this finder window, drop it into terminal right after cd space, press return, then I've changed directory to the WeatherGIF folder. I can ls just to verify that I'm in here. Yep, these are the names of the same files and folders that are in that directory. Now I'm going to type nano, n-a-n-o, space, then dot git ignore, all one word. Now nano is a text-based text editor that you can run in the terminal program. By saying dot git ignore, we're saying create a new file called dot git ignore, then press return, and then this is nano that's launched. It's a text editor that's entirely text-based running in the terminal. Then I'm going to enter the name of the file that I want git to ignore. Now that's going to be API key Dot swift. It's important to enter the file in git ignore using the exact same name with the same spelling that you're going to be using when you're creating the file in Xcode. So notice that I've used capital A, capital P, capital I, lowercase keys dot swift. I want to make sure that when I name a file, I use that exact same spelling and the exact same capitalization. And with that done, I can look at the bottom of nano and see all the commands I can use. And the one that I want is this one that says the caret character up arrow X. That means control X. So type control X to exit. You'll get this message here your save modified buffer, you can just press Y. Then when you see this message file name to write git ignored, just press return here. Now the file was saved, but if we ls to list the files, we won't see it and we won't see it if we go into the finder either. That's because in Mac OS, any files that start with a period are hidden files, but we can show this file by typing shift command period. So I'm going to do that now and you can see the dot git ignore file is in there. It's grayed out to show you that it's a hidden file, but it exists. I can even double click on it to check the contents, it will open it up in Mac text edit. There it is, API keys.swift. Great. So I'll command Q to quit out of this. Then I can quit terminal. Again, all we did was create a file called dot git ignore and put in the name of the file that contains the API key that we want git to ignore. So if you ever need to go through these steps, they're on the slide, they're also in the companion text. And so now let's create that file in Xcode API keys.swift to hold our API key. So back in Xcode, let's add this API keys.swift file just below info.plist. So I'm gonna click on info.plist. File new file, I'll create a file below that. I wanna select Swift file, click next. And let's give it the exact name we gave in git ignore. So that's capital A, capital P, capital I, lowercase keys, click create. And then right in here, we'll call this, this will be a struct. So we'll say struct API keys, open and close curlies, and we'll say static let. And by saying static, we're not going to have to create a variable with the struct instance. We can just refer to the type API keys and then say dot in the name of the struct. So let's name the static constant Google places key equals, and then open double quotes. I'll paste in the API key that we copied from before. The double quote should be closed. Now, instead of typing in this API key, we're gonna be able to just refer to API keys dot Google places key. And we'll actually use this data structure in the next video. So we'll ignore this for now, but for now, let's go ahead and commit and push our updates to this project and make sure that our API keys dot Swift file is not uploaded to our GitHub repo. So I clicked on the project file in the upper left. Actually, I don't need to do that. But what we do wanna do is head up here to the source control menu. I'll select commit, click on push to remote. Make sure that you've got a comment in here. Mine just says with dot git ignore. Then I'm gonna click on commit and push and everything was sent over to GitHub. What I'm gonna do is go into my GitHub repo repo for WeatherGift right now and just double check to make sure that my API keys file is not there. So I've gone to my GitHub account, github.com slash Gallagher. You should go to yours. You can click on repositories and your WeatherGift repo is probably your top repo. So click your WeatherGift repository, then inside you're going to see another folder that's called WeatherGift. Click on that. And sure enough, I don't see API keys.swift. So git ignore worked. 
this is perfect. That's what we wanted to do in this video. Congratulations. So in these last two videos, we installed CocoaPods on our Mac. Now we should only need to do this once. Then we installed the specific CocoaPod libraries for our project. Now you should do this once for every project that uses CocoaPod libraries. Now this was a three-step process. We headed to the terminal, we changed directories to our project directory. Then we used the pod init command to create that pod file. We updated the pod file to include the CocoaPod library instructions that we wanted. And then we used the pod install command to update our project, add the specific CocoaPod software libraries we want to use, and create our XC workspace file, which is what we use from now on to get into our project. Now we also created a Google Cloud account and added a credit card for billing information. You should only need to do this once, and now that you've got your billing information set up, you can use this on any new Google Cloud projects that you create for any services that you use. Then we also created a project in Google Cloud and we got an API key for this project. Now you'll do something like this once for each project or app that you create that uses Google Cloud services. Then we secured our API key, and this included creating a .gitignore file to hide the API keys.swift file that holds our project's API key. Then we created our API keys.swift file and pasted in our API key, and we committed and pushed our project to GitHub just to verify that the gitignore worked, and it did. Now that we got these steps down, in the next video, we'll get the Google Places software library working in our app.